Welcome, people of God. We're so glad to gather with you today in this digital space, even as members of our church are gathering at this moment on our campus for an in-person outdoor event just in the place where I am recording a few days earlier. We're doing it this way because we'd like to gather safely in ways that are possible, especially for communities around the church where vaccines have been accessible. But of course we know that, that the vaccine is not available to everyone, and we know that, that even where it is available, it is inequitably distributed. We know too that there are many people who are at risk of illness for many reasons, and those folks may not be protected by the coronavirus vaccine. So we're choosing to worship together this summer in several ways. We're continuing our digital worship services at this time online, and we're also planning to gather once a month uh, here on the church campus for outdoor services where we can bring together as many people as possible. Join us next month, if you're able to, on June the 20th. We'll be back right here in this spot. La Mesa is taking the lead, so you can look forward to a Spanish language and bilingual worship experience, especially led by Pastor David Mateo. However you're joining us for worship today, however you're walking with our church throughout the summer, I hope that you know that you are in our prayers and that you still belong here at United Church of Chapel Hill. We're grateful for the opportunity to worship together. We're grateful for your participation in the life of our community. You're in our prayers. Let's turn our hearts and our minds to the worship of God. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now, there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was be bewildered because each one of them heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt 
and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others, others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, People of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is, it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young ones shall see visions, and your old ones shall, shall dream dreams. Even, even those enslaved to me, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord, shall be saved. When the companion comes, whom I will send from the Father, the Spirit of Truth who proceeds from the Father, he will testify about me. You will testify, too, because you have been with me from the beginning. But I have said these things to you so that when their time comes, you will remember what I told you about them. I didn't say these things to you from the beginning because I was with you. But now I go away to the one who sent me. None of you ask me, where are you going? Yet because I have said these things to you, you are filled with sorrow. I assure you that it is better for you that, that I go away. If I don't go away, the companion won't come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. When he comes, he will show the world it was wrong, wrong about sin, righteousness, and judgment. He will show the world it was wrong about sin because they don't believe in me. He will show the world it was wrong about righteousness because I'm going to the Father and you won't see me anymore. He will show the world it was wrong about judgment because this world's ruler stands condemned. I have much more to say to you but you can't handle it now. However, when the Spirit of Truth comes, He will guide you in all truth. He won't speak on His own, but will say whatever He hears and will proclaim to you what is to come. He will glorify me because He will take what is mine and proclaim it to you. Everything that the Father has is mine. That's why I said that the Spirit takes what is mine and will proclaim it to you. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Would you join with me in prayer? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable to you, O God, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, here we are. Many of you are at home this morning, but at this very moment, there are about a hundred people gathered here around the portico on Sunday morning, uh, ready for worship, 
in the first of our live outdoor experiences this summer. And being here with, with all of these folks today, well, under this awning, it just makes me think about how our church must first have gathered. You know how we largely think about our history in terms of our buildings. We have so much activity around our building. Uh, we do so much in our building. We, we define the history of our congregation in terms of the buildings that we have inhabited. So it can be sort of hard to conceive of a time when the church had no building and when people just gathered without one. Well, the past year has given us a little taste of that, hasn't it? How has that felt to you, I wonder? Maybe if you're like me, you have missed the connections that we have had. Maybe if you're like me, it has been more connecting with small groups of people because there's no regular time and place to meet the big crowd. Maybe if you're like me, you miss the energy of being together with a whole body of people, even as we're taking incremental steps toward that. Well, out here, it just makes me think that this is how our ancestors in faith often worshiped. In fact, here in the American South and on the American frontier in the 1700s, 1800s, uh, the preacher would, would travel from place to place wherever he could count on finding uh, two or three people who have gathered. You wouldn't go to church so much as church would come to you. And actually, James O'Kelly, the founder of our church, was pretty good at this kind of thing. He and others who founded a few congregations in Orange County and Chatham County and Alamance County, they were revival preachers going from place to place and bringing the, the energy of the Holy Spirit with them. They didn't need a building to bring the church together. Well, of course, I do not sentimentalize the past. I know that these frontier churches were full of, of people who lived hard, sometimes violent lives. I know that our ancestors in these frontier churches uh, held some positions on slavery and reconstruction that we would find embarrassing today. Really? Our ancestors in faith said those things? And by talking about this history without our proud building, I, in no mean, I, might, I by no means mean to, to minimize the labor and the generosity and the contributions of so many over many generations who worked for a future when we would have a building. I'm very grateful for our building. But here we are, outdoors. It's 2021 and we can't go inside our building. And with all these things in mind, with the, the possibilities and limitations of our church home in mind, with the imperfections of our predecessors in mind. As we stand outdoors on the day of Pentecost, this is a fine occasion to remember how God has called the church together in many different ways. This is a fine occasion to remember how God has called many different communities into the worship of Christ Jesus. The Pentecost, originally, it was nothing but a gift. An unexpected gift, a surprising blessing, a surprising movement of the Spirit among those who had not the faintest idea that Christ could be found among them. Luke revels in the story of how the Holy Spirit snuck up on these people. Throughout his retelling of the Pentecost narrative, there is an abiding sense of here? Who? Among these people? Of all people, these people in this place, God has, has moved among them? We can relate to that a bit ourselves. Us? Really? There's a, a sense of disbelief that God might be found among us. No less than there was a similar sense of disbelief among these whom Luke describes as devout Jews from many different backgrounds and traditions. Parthians and Medes, Elamites, 
The residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pomphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, so many different people, so many different traditions represented here. And yet in our own language, we can hear all of these different people speaking of God's deeds and power among us. What a miracle. What a mystery. And the Pentecost event becomes a defining story in the Christian tradition to show how God will speak to you, whoever you are, to demonstrate how God will come and find you wherever you are, to illustrate how the Spirit lives in the differences between us. Well, they were at a table, but that's all the ecclesial imagery that Luke will give us. There's no church, there's no steeple. There's not even an altar or a tabernacle or a cross. Luke says they were dining in a house. No details on the structure. But whatever it was, it must have been a modest one. And in any event, it did not keep them safe from the wind of the Spirit that blew among them. So you know it is just as well that we are out here on the portico. Because even if we were inside, we would still be unprotected from the gifts of the Spirit and the surprises that God has in store. Remember what the Lord has said to Ezekiel, I will breathe life into these dry bones. I will bring you up from your graves and I will put my Spirit within you. And you shall know that I am the Lord your God, and I will speak life into you. And you will not forget what I have spoken and how I have acted on your behalf. Thanks be to the living God. Amen. His mouth came fire and smoke Looked all around me, it looked so fine Till I asked my Lord if all was mine Every time I feel the Spirit Moving in my heart, I will pray Yes, every time I feel the Spirit Moving in my heart, I will pray To wooden rivers chilly and cold it chills the body but not the soul there ain't but one drain upon this track it runs to heaven and right back every time i feel the spirit moving in my heart i will pray yes every time i feel the spirit moving in my heart As we turn our hearts and our minds now in prayer to the living God, I want to remind you that many of our prayer requests can be found in the bulletin information sent from the church office. Let us pray. 
God of the roaring flame and the still small voice. The day of Pentecost has come, but we are not all together in one place. We are separated from those with whom we worship and fellowship and grow as disciples. Some of us are separated by distance and others by precaution or anxiety or fear or anger or illness or exhaustion. And so we pray that the mysteries of Pentecost would find us even in our isolation. May signs of the Spirit come and rest upon us. May we see these signs in each other. May the Spirit loosen our tongues, propelling us into conversation with those who are not our tribe. May the Spirit grant us understanding so that we might perceive the meaning of stories that are unfamiliar to us. May the Spirit move us to prophesy, to dream dreams and see visions so that we might be a people led by the holy into holy work and holy transformation and holy rest. We pray for a transformation of this broken world we pray that the Spirit would change hearts and minds and overwhelm the death-dealing violence in Gaza and Israel with cooperation and goodwill. We pray that the Spirit would change hearts and minds and overwhelm racism with justice and empathy, understanding and repentance. We pray that the Spirit would change hearts and minds and mend the stubbornness greed, misunderstanding, and inequity that is exacerbating the COVID crisis in communities around the world and around our state. We pray that the Spirit would change hearts and minds and transform politicians into speakers of truth and seekers of wholeness. We pray that the Spirit would change hearts and minds so that justice might roll down like a mighty river and righteousness as an impassable torrent. Inspire in us, followers of the risen Lord, a devotion to the teaching of the word and to fellowship, to breaking of bread and to prayer. Fill us with awe at the wonders around us and be with those in our congregation who are struggling. We pray, God, for your special watch care on those who are sick, those who are struggling in their homes and their work and their relationships. Bring healing and mercy, God. And transform us as we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. May God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May God look upon you with kindness and give you peace. Amen. <laughs>